So welcome to my talk, um, Native versus Hybrid. I should give you a bit of outline because I'm not good at summary. <laughs> um, so anyways, today what you'll be hearing from me is basically what is this hybrid app? What are you talking about? Um, very, very basic summary. I'm not going to go into details and how it differs from native. So I'm calling everything that's not hybrid as native. So if you write um, iOS and Xcode using Objective-C or Swift or that's native. If you do Android with Android Studio, that's native. Um, or you do hybrid, which I'm going to go into soon. And then um, I'll be talking about when and where you should use it and why. And hopefully by the end of this session, um, you'll have a bit of more idea of what it is, um, whether you should bother learning about it, and whether you should use it or not. So a bit about myself. I'm sure most of you don't know me. So I'm a senior software at Flexor, as um, has already been introduced. I'm based in Auckland, New Zealand. Any Kiwis in the room? Yay! <laughs> so if you haven't been to Auckland, you should definitely visit. It's a lovely city. It looks like this every day, <laughs> except when it's raining. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, a bit about my background. So I've been working on the apps primarily for most of my career. I've been working on I actually started as an Android developer, and then I moved on to iOS. Um, and I should say upfront that most of my experience is based on the native development, and hybrid is something new that I have kind of dabbled on recently. But I wanted to share um, my perspective as someone who has been a strong advocate for native, and I've always been thinking that you know, native got to be better. You know? But recently, I've been reviewing my thoughts because the technology doesn't stop. It always moves. And a lot of the hybrid, as I would go through shortly, is based on web technology. And as you would know, web technology has moved on a lot in the last five years, last year, even just last six months. So I think it's definitely worth reviewing this decision every now and then. Also, another very unique perspective, I guess, is that my work experience has been both as a developer and also as a project manager. So I wanted to kind of give you the perspective of having that experience both as a developer and also as a manager and a consultant. Enough about me. Um, so the first encounter, um, a few years ago, back in 2012, um, I first heard about this amazing technology, so-called, and somebody told me about it, and it was called PhoneGap. Oh. <laughs> so they were like, oh, um, why are you doing Android and iOS? You can use this technology called PhoneGap, and it'll just port your code, and you can have Android app and iOS app, and it's like, it's great. You know, you should definitely use it. And I, I was quite... Um, you know, I was like, oh, okay, maybe. And they're like, it's cross-platform. Um, but I was quite skeptical. I was hopeful for about maybe three seconds. And then I was like, you know, really, would it really work? So I was quite skeptical. And ever since then, I've always asked this question of, do I do native, do I do a hybrid, is this cross platform technology worth considering? You know, do, should I learn about it? Um, so I wanted to share this whole journey of several years of pondering, <laughs> thinking about this question, and wasting a lot of time. So hopefully, you wouldn't do the same. So what is a hybrid app? What am I talking about? So hybrid app refers to having a web view inside a native container. And this is slightly different from web apps, where it's purely web. Um, you can release it in the app store. You can download it. It'll have all these native shells. You actually get the Xcode project and Android Studio projects, and then you can port it. Um, all your contents go inside the web view, which is rendered automatically. 
Um, there's a, I'm using an example of Cordova. And for disclosures, I'm not going to go into every single platform and every single framework that's available and compare them and give you all this detailed analysis. That's not really what it's about. Um, it's just an example that I'm using. Cordova is a very well known, I think um, PhoneGap, it was formerly known as PhoneGap, now it's Cordova, but PhoneGap is a um, productized version. Um, anyways, there's a whole history in Wikipedia. But here's a very um, brief look at the architecture. So you have um, the web app where you have the actual contents with the HTML, JavaScript, and you have all these resources, icons, um, all these things, and then you, have, you put this in the web view, um, which is the native shell, and you get the HTML rendering, which would, you know, the render the content, show it on the screen, and there's a Cordova plugin that has um, access to different hardware devices like accelerometer, camera, contacts, etc. And then also you can have custom plugins um, where it's developed by other um, third-party developers, which would which may um, give you extra access to other hardwares, or you can write your own. Um, and these the custom plugins or the native the core plugins would talk to the OS APIs, and then it talks to all these stuff. So that sounds pretty cool. Um, so obviously there's some advantages to this first one, the cross-platform. Um, and it also gives you access to the native functionalities because it's in a native shell. Um, so if you want to go a bit more crazy, you could embed this web view inside your native app. So you could have like half and half and have like half your app written in native and then embed the web view inside it, which sounds pretty cool, but it kind of you know, comes with some limitations. Um, the third point is app updates, meaning you could literally update your app like live through web, and then you wouldn't actually need to push the update through the app store, which used to be, I think used to be a huge advantage, but now the Apple review time has actually gone down to like three or four days instead of three weeks. But still there's a um, big pluses to um, being able to update your app right away. But at the same time, there's a bit of a security concern because it's obviously like a web browser. So if you have a bug or a security flaws, then it could kind of crush your app. Um, and the last point is the single code base you have your, you know, the whole project and have all the business logic in a single code base and then you have um, all these different platforms for just UI compatibility mainly. Um, there's obviously drawbacks. The contents needs to be in HTML5 or HTML. Um, so if your app is not really written for web, or if you're not familiar with the web technology, it's obviously going to be challenging. Um, the dependency on the third-party platforms, third-party plugins, third-party frameworks, you see where I'm going. Um, you have to deal with your own legacy code and your own bugs or your own team's glitches, but at the same time, there's going to be bugs and glitches in the frameworks and plugins, and there's always a support issue you know, is it going to be supported for like next 30 years? Probably not, not even probably five years. Um, there's bugs, performance. This used to be a huge issue with the phone gap because um, the web rendering was very um, slow and laggy, but now it's improving, the framework's changing, um, things are changing. But there's always limitations, um, so it's not, the same as native. So you might be wondering and asking this question, is it really the best of both worlds? Do you get the same cross-platform um, abilities and have access to all these native hardware? You know, is it really the good, you know, do you get the really benefits of two things? 
I've been asking this same question over and over again many times. But then I realize that's not really the right question to ask. Maybe you should be asking whether is it right to use it in my project. Because a lot of these considerations are really dependent on your project. So here's a silly question. Which one would you sit on? I think everybody would agree that the chair on the left looks very comfortable. You probably want to sit on there, right? But when you put it in this context, it's pretty obvious that seating is not, you know, the main feature here. Um, in the context of having a tree swing, you probably want a tire, and that does the job fine. By the way, this is a um, part of the comic strip that I got, which is very funny. It's about project management. <coughs> I think my favorite part is on the left side, the left bottom, the how the project was documented. We see this problem all the time with every project. So I think hopefully most of you agree that it's really the question of whether it fits into your project and what is your project actually about. A lot of the articles um, that I've read, so many things, I've, I was trying to do lots of research, they always talk about um, hybrid is this and this and this, and a native is this and this, and um, a very, you know, very general approach um, of saying, oh, hybrid is um, single code base, therefore it takes less time, and native is you need to develop in two things, so therefore it takes more time. But that's not always true. It really depends on the context. So here's some of the important questions that you should be asking. Like, what does the client want? That's the core of your project. As a developer, um, I really want to use really cool technologies and new things that come out in iOS 10. I get really excited and I'm like, we should use this and we should do this because it's cool. But when we actually think about what does a project actually need? Do we need that in our app? Maybe having an accelerometer to you know, move things and that might be really cool. But maybe that's not actually needed in the app. So that determines what your project is. And then the next question from there is what are the technical requirements from the app's functionality? Is it a web-based project? Does it have a website? Well, then it's, it'll be pretty easy to port it right into the hybrid app. If you didn't, then it'll be harder, right? What is the main functionality of your app? Is it mainly a presentation of information? Or is it based on a hardware device? A lot of the apps that I've been working on has mainly been on the core hardware functionality. A lot of the apps that we design in, in our company is industrial apps. There's usually the custom hardware and it needs to interact with um, a smartphone. Therefore, it's not actually about the presentation of information. Usually it comes down to the actual networking or the core. Um, and I sometimes need to dive into the core frameworks and things like that, which is not pretty. But in that case, it'll be very challenging to actually use hybrid app framework. Whereas if you had a presentation of information where you present a set of information, user puts in some sort of input, it processes it, and it's, if it's like that sort of the usual, um, you know, the things that you could potentially do in the web browser, but it's easier to do it in the app type of scenarios, then hybrid app is, has definite advantages. What are the target platforms? You know, I was doing the research and 
I didn't know there were so many platforms. Um, for example, the one on the top right, I still don't quite know what that is. But there's lots of platforms. So if you're targeting just Android and iOS, which are the two main platforms, then yeah, maybe native is fine because there's lots of Android developers and lots of iOS developers. But if you wanted to target as many platforms as possible to, to be able to cover most of the population or most of the users, or if your users are really diverse a lot from lots of different countries, um, different backgrounds, different age groups, then this is worth considering because you definitely don't want to develop for eight different platforms and you definitely don't want to learn every single one of them. And the question of legacy code. Um, so the, per the project that I'm currently working on has um, like a nightmare <laughs> of legacy code. And it's written in native, it's written in Android, and it's written in iOS, um, Objective-C. So I can't even go to Swift because there's like five or six different dependent library modules that are also written in Objective-C. And I was trying to actually, you know, port it to Swift, but there's too many compatibility issues. And if I want to port everything, including all the library modules, it's virtually impossible. And also, on the other spectrum, other end of spectrum, um, the other project that I'm working on has a legacy code in um, extension JavaScript. And it's written in hybrid app platform, but it's out of date. But still, it's probably easier to use as much as possible and just stick with JavaScript and um, go with the hybrid rather than trying to decode this and rewrite into native, you know, that you get the story. And what about the project size? Is it a very small size or is it a large corporate size? Um, some of our clients are um, new startups. Some of our clients are big corporates. And the target users are different. Also, the complexity of the project matters. If it's a um, you know, reasonably simple type of app that does primarily the main one or two things, yeah, it's, it's relatively simple. But if it has lots of functionalities and it's part of the suite of applications they want to develop down the track and there's five more apps that's designed to work with, you know, they, they want to all create together, um, stuff, then, you know, it's very complex. And also depends on the budget. But I put this sort of the last. I think this is, in a way, um, if your app is not going to work, it doesn't matter whether, whether it's small or large. You know, if the, functionality, if the functionality of the app is mainly about the presentation of information, doesn't matter whether the project size is large or small, you can, you can do it with, you know, hybrid app. Um, but if the, if the project is about, say, um, using a um, wireless uh, technology to transfer files, and it's very down to core frameworks, you need to do a lot of hacking into the lower levels, and it doesn't have a lot of UI, it only has one button or two, it's pretty obvious where the choices lie. Um, so I think this is important consideration, but it's not the deciding factor. And I, th I tend to disagree that just because it's a hybrid or uh, phone gap or you know, cross-platform doesn't mean it's a smaller budget or it's not going to take less time. If you need to tweak your app um, so many times, although you have a single code base, you need to tweak it for um, 10 different types of devices and, and all these things and all these that, uh, like this and that, it doesn't really have that advantage anymore. So you really need to think about where, how the project should be developed and how it should be written and then choose your technology. What? So this is project lifecycle. I originally had an idea of putting like 
an idea, planning, um, prototype. But you know, I think this kind of shows quite well how it goes. You know, we kind of start with the smiley face. Yes, we have an idea. Let's do a prototype. Great, it's going good. Um, oh, we need to ship it tomorrow. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. And then now, like, there's all these bugs, and and then you know the the updates are like tomorrow, and and then all these release cycles, and and then we're happy again. So we fixed all the bugs, and then the same cycle continues. So um, if you had a very simple um, proof of concept, then maybe it's worth considering using this cross-platform for a proof of concept. Um, so by asking all these questions, you get lists of technical requirements, what it needs to do, what is the main functionality, and then we choose the framework or technology. So I think all this research needs to be based on a set of criteria, rather than just sitting there looking into things and, oh, I think that looks better because of it's a high performance, but what is it for? You know, what is it performance for? So my advice is use the framework the way it's designed to be. Um, one funny story is that the current project that I'm working on is um, has a Android and iOS code base, and they're supposed to do the same thing. It's the same app, right? It's got a set of functionalities and and design and everything, and they're supposed to work exactly the same. But as you know, under the hood, iOS and Android can't be more, more different. They're completely different. But user expects them to behave the same way. Um, so I was looking through the Android code, and there's all these um, like false delegates. Like, there's no delegates in Android. Why are you calling your interface Delegates, it doesn't work that way. And they're trying to call async tasks for every um, completion blocks. It doesn't work that way. You need to write Android app in an Android way. And you need to write an iOS app in the iOS way. You can't just write one code and then just like convert the language and translate it. It doesn't work that way, right? So that's not printing. <laughs> um, here's a brief chart of, um, I'm using the code over as an example, what it can do. So there's a um, set of hardware capabilities and then the platforms, the, all the boxes with the green tick, they're the ones that are supported by the core um, plugin. So say if you want to use accelerometer with the camera and um, there's some sort of connection uh, with some files, then yeah, that's pretty good. Um, this one's not so happy. So if you want to do a file transfer with um, status bar, then you know there's lots of red crosses. And also, um, there's the tick with the notes. I still see them as like yeah, it's possible, but there'll be some tweaking involved. Um, which I don't really see as beneficial. So if you need to do so many tweakings, unless you're a very good web developer and you're just starting on the Android or iOS and you're not really familiar, then maybe, yeah, it's possible. Um, but if you're just objectively looking at this, then follow the one that makes most sense. So this could be a potential deal breaker. One of the main advantages of hybrid app when I first heard about it was, um, so there was after phone gap and, and then like my af after overcoming my initial skepticism and maybe this is worth considering. That was when I looked at um, you know, being, being able to mix the web views with the native. That sounded really cool because that means I can you know, just build my app um, with all these things that needs to be performance um, critical in native language and then have the web views, you know, that sounds pretty cool. But at the same time, you need to consider whether it's going to be as smooth as it sounds. Because if you need to debug all your native code and the hybrid and the plugins and the frameworks and try to catch up with these OS updates that happens every year and six months or, you know, 
um, it, it's a lot of things to worry about. So is this the right choice? Um, these are a summary of the questions that we just talked about. So find out what the capability of the framework is and development resources. So what sort of team do you have? Dependency, legacy code. These are all technical stuff. But that's not all. Project is made up of something bigger than just technical. There's the project management side, the consistency that I talked about. Um, not only the UI consistency, but functional. Um, time to market. So that's like the time between your initial idea to when it gets released. But there's also the response time when the update comes out. You know, do you want to be very responsive to the new, newest OS updates? And then the project life expectancy, um, dealing with code maintenance in the long run. So which is better really depends on your project and the requirements. And unfortunately, I can't give you a simple answer. There's no ultimate winner. So here's my closing thought. Don't be afraid to go against the flow unless you're an app developer. Going against the framework is a really bad idea. And trust me, I've, I've seen it, I've done it myself. You don't wanna go there. So go with the flow. Choose a solution that fits the project. Don't try to fit your project with technology. These frameworks and tools are supposed to help you with solving the problem. If it's giving you more problems, then it's not the right thing to use. So always think about what you need to do, what makes best sense, what would help you the most, and I'm sure you'll have the answer. Thank you.